really Makki Qur'an because in the story of the migration to Habasha, the migration to Abyssinia, we find that Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, recited Surat Maryam uh, to a Najashi, uh, to, to Ashama, who was the, the Najashi of Abyssinia, the Negus of Abyssinia, as a means of, of showing him where our religion stands on Jesus, peace be upon him. So Surat Maryam is one of the early Makki surahs. It is one of the first surahs revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it was used in the most eloquent way uh, to call Najashi to Islam, to call the ruler of Abyssinia to Islam. It's also a story that, that you know, focuses on the elements of the life of, of Mary and, and, and Jesus and Zakaria and Yahya and so on and so forth alayhi wasalam. It focuses particularly on the struggle. So it does not give us much details into their lives. The reason being is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the, you know, the, the stories in accordance with the theme and the time in which he revealed it. So at this point in the prophetic career of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He's really not encountering people of the book. So knowing the fine, intricate details of the life of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the life of Zakaria alayhi salam, and the life of Maryam alayhi salam, these are really, really, you know, not, not important at this point in his, in, in his prophethood alayhi salatu wasalam, in early Mecca. So the majority of the details about Maryam alayhi salam, and about Zakaria alayhi salam, and about Isa alayhi salam, and Yahya alayhi salam, and so on and so forth, they come in Medina when the Prophet ﷺ encounters the people of the book at a more heavy level. So that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed those details. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really revealing the tawakkul of these people, the trust that these people had in their Lord and the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worked in their lives. So it really continues um, with the same theme as Surah Al-Kahf. The planning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highlighted theme in these people's lives. And it's really interesting and beautiful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَّةً That this is a mention of the mercy of your Lord to his servant Zakariya alayhi salam. ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَّةً That this is a mention of the mercy of your Lord to his servant Zakariya alayhi salam. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that this, you know, this is a mention of the mercy of his Lord to his servant? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say your Lord, dhikru rahmati rabbika, that this is a mention of the mercy of your Lord to his servant Zakariya alayhi salam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to understand and appreciate whether you're the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or whether you know, you're just a person that's reading the Quran, a Muslim that's reading the Quran 1400 years later, that the same Lord that worked miracles in the lives of Zakariya alayhi salam and Maryam alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and so on and so forth, is your Lord as well. That's your Rabb as well, right? So it's not his Rabb to his servant, his Lord to his servant, it's your Lord to his servant. That is to show you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just as present in your life and is just as capable in your life of doing the things that he did for those prophets and those great people that came before. So don't read the, the Qur'an as a great storybook and as something, you know, as describing a lord of the past, a rabb of the past. But recognize instead that this is your rabb as well. This is your lord as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just as capable of working those same miracles in your life as he, as, as he was in the, in the lives of Zakaria alayhi salam and Maryam alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and so on and so forth. So that's really the beautiful way that this, that this surah starts off to remind you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning in your favor. Also a major, a major gem, subhanAllah, one of the most beautiful things that I took from the surah. And to be honest with you, I, I never really paid attention to this until this year in my own, in my own reading, subhanAllah, even though I've done tafsir of surah Maryam. Uh, and, it, and it's just a reflection. So please don't take this as a tafsir, but really just a reflection because we're supposed to do tadabbur on the Qur'an. We're supposed to reflect on the Qur'an. In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning a family that's losing a child. And that's perceived obviously by that family as a curse and by Musa Islam as well as a curse that they're losing their child, right? In Surah Maryam, Maryam is being given a child and she thinks that that's a curse. So subhanAllah, you look at the two opposite sides of the coin. In Surah Al-Kahf, a family is losing a child 
And they would wonder if that's a curse or if that's a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Maryam, she is receiving a child and she's wondering if that's a punishment or a curse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it's amazing how one person's test is another person's blessing, right? And how in both of these cases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was planning in the favor of these people uh, in accordance with their unique circumstances and with the unique desired results from each of these people um, as they go through their journey of life. So it's really a powerful uh, connection if you look at Maryam alayhi salam and you look at the couple that loses their child in Surah Al-Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us as well the declaration of monotheism from Isa alayhi salam. So Makki Qur'an is a declaration, Makki Qur'an, throughout the Meccan, Meccan Qur'an is a declaration of the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of God and a belief in the hereafter. So in this mention of Isa alayhi salam, in this mention of Jesus, peace be upon him, it's Isa alayhi salam declaring the oneness of God from the cradle, even as he was just born. So it's the con- it, it, it sort of falls in line with Makki Qur'an as Isa alayhi salam himself as well is admitting to the oneness of God and reaffirming the oneness of God, even as he was still in the cradle alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions to us the... Uh, you know, some of the prophets that he's favored and some of the reasons why he favored those prophets. So Allah mentions to us, وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ibrahim, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا Allah says, make mention in the book of Ibrahim, Abraham alayhi salam, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا He was a man of truth and a prophet. إِذْ قَالَ لِي أَبِيهِ When he called out to his father, يَا أَبَتِي مِمَا تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا Why are you worshipping that which doesn't hear you, that which doesn't see you, and that which does you no good? You know, this idea here, subhanAllah, that, you know, why would you worship gods that cannot avail you in any way whatsoever? Why are you worshipping the idols? So Ibrahim is calling his father and saying, why are you worshipping these idols? The Prophet ﷺ is calling the people of Mecca and saying, why are you worshipping these idols? They don't do you any good. The gist of Ibrahim's da'wah as well, يَا أَبَتِي إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يَمَسَّكَ عَذَابُ مِنَ الرَّحْمَانِ فَتَكُونَ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَّ O oh my father, I'm afraid that you'll be punished by the most merciful. And so you will be together with the shaytan. You will be a friend of the shaytan and accompanying him in his punishment. The reason why that's so powerful is that it demonstrates the compassion of Ibrahim salam for his people. Just like the Prophet ﷺ had a compassion for his people. The Prophet ﷺ was not degrading or belittling with his words towards the people of Mecca. On the contrary, the Prophet ﷺ showed love and he showed respect and he showed compassion as he spoke to them and showed that this is for your own good, that I care about you and that's why I'm calling you with this message. Just like our father Ibrahim ﷺ called his father and said, leave these idols, they're not going to do you any good whatsoever. Now, just like Ibrahim salam was rejected by his father and threatened. The Prophet salam was rejected by his people and threatened. And Ibrahim salam responded with grace and the Prophet salam responded with grace. So Ibrahim salam says, Salamun alayka sa'astaghfiru laka rabbi innahu kana bihafiyya. He left his father and he said, Peace be on to you. I will seek forgiveness from my Lord for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is receptive of my supplications, receptive of my, of my invocations. So the Prophet ﷺ also, when, when Quraysh came at him, when the people of Mecca came at the Prophet ﷺ with threats and they came at him with persecution, the Messenger ﷺ responded with grace, just like Ibrahim ﷺ responded with grace. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention as a result of that? Ibrahim was given, وَهَبْنَا لَهُ Ibrahim ﷺ was gifted with his children, right? That would bear nations. So subhanAllah, his nation rejected him, but Ibrahim salam gave birth to nations. He gave birth to the to two great nations, right? So Ibrahim salam was gifted with, with two nations as he was rejected from his own nation. Likewise, the Prophet wasallam, as he was rejected by the people of Mecca, he would be given the people of Medina, and then also the people of Mecca would come back to believe in him as well, alayhi salatu wasalam as well as much of the world, and of course having the greatest Ummah alayhi salatu wasalam, the largest following uh, alayhi salatu wasalam. So when you respond with grace to persecution, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something better. And that's also a theme in Surah Al-Kahf, that when you, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something better, 
when you when you respond the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to respond in times of test and trial. Then we see Musa alayhi salam, innahu kana mukhlasan wa kana rasula nabiya wa nadaynahu min janab al-tur al-aymani wa qarrabnahu najiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Musa alayhi salam who was chosen and purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was called at At-Tur, at Mount Sinai, just like the Prophet sallallahu was called at, at, at Hira, in Jabal al-Nur, at the mountain of, of, of light. And Musa alayhi salam was given Harun alayhi salam to support him. And the Prophet sallallahu was given Sahaba like Harun alayhi salam to support him. So Musa alayhi salam had his, his brother to support him and to be by his side. The Prophet sallallahu had Abu Bakr, the Prophet sallallahu had Ali, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had Khadija and so on and so forth. May Allah be pleased with them all. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also was given people to depend upon, just like Musa Alaihi Salam was given Harun to depend upon. And then, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ismail, Make mention in the book of Ismail Alaihi Salam, the Prophet Ishmael. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّ uh, He was truthful to his promise with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he was a messenger and a prophet. And he used to كان يأمر أهله بالصلاة he used to, he used to command his his family with prayer and with charity and so on and so forth, and he stuck to his small group of people. So Ismail alayhi salam, you know, faced a very difficult upbringing, very difficult childhood, and he was settled in this desert of Mecca, where he where he he simply did as he was commanded, right? He he dealt with the small group of people that he had with him. And he was truthful to his promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, put him in that difficult situation, he fulfilled the promise that he made. And many of the scholars, they mention here that what this is talking about is that Ismail alayhi salam told his father that when he carries out the slaughter, that you will find me to be from the patient. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam actually proceeded forward to carry out that slaughter, to carry out the sacrifice of his son, Ismail alayhi salam, remained truthful to his promise. He remained silent and he remained patient as he said he would. So he held firm to his promises that he made and he used to command this small group of people with uh, prayer and fasting and charity. And through him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon the world Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the idea here is that the initial message to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to focus الأقربين, to focus on the small group of people, to focus on your family. And inshallah ta'ala, you know, more will come. So Ismail Islam was was comfortable and he was at peace with the small following that he had because he knows that it's not about the quantity that you have of followers, but rather it's the quality of the followers that you do have. And that would be the same case with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course Wathkur Fil Kitabi Idris uh, Allah mentions Idris alayhi salam, Enoch, who was raised to a high station. And at the end of the day, having a high station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all that matters. Right? That's all that matters. If you are elevated in the sight of God, then you are truly elevated. And if you are belittled in the sight of God, then you are truly humiliated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these prophets and he mentions some lessons for the Prophet وسلم, to hold on to. And Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ These are the ones who gain the favor of Allah. These are the ones who gain the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the descendants of Adam alayhi salam, from those who were uh, carried on, on, on the ark of Noah, Nuh alayhi salam, from the, the children of Abraham and so on and so forth. These are the favored ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What makes them such a favored group of people? إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Ayatul Rahmani Kharru Sujadan Wabukiya. The signs of greatness in these people is that if you recite upon them the verses of the most merciful, they fall in prostration and they and, and they start you know and they start to cry. So some you know some of the scholars here mentioned that they are favored because they both externally humble themselves to the message and they internally humble themselves to the message. Their external humility, their khudur, is their falling in prostration, their internal humility is what leads them to tears and crying. Their khushur is what leads them to crying. The next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُ الصَّلَاءُ وَاتَّبَعُ الشَّهَوَاتِ That then came after them a group of people that stopped praying on time, so they stopped externally submitting themselves, وَاتَّبَعُ الشَّهَوَاتِ And internally, instead of khushur, instead of humility to Allah, they followed their desires. So the loss of both external and internal um, 
an internal submission. So this is, you know, this sort of shows you the difference, the contrast between those who are favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who, uh, who turned away from the blessing and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you move on to Surah Taha, right? Surah Taha is a very powerful surah because of the lessons that it contains to the person who is actually in the capacity of da'wah. So Surah Taha, you know, first it says, مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكِ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى That, you know, this Qur'an was not sent to cause distress or to cause anxiety or to cause, or, or to cause failure, to result in failure. This Qur'an was sent to internally empower you and to also bring you success and victory, right? It's a reminder for people of humility, for people who humble themselves to their Lord. And in Surah Taha, uh, which is also early Mecki Qur'an. And the reason why we know it's early Mecki Qur'an, or of the reasons we know, is because this is the surah that caused Umar bin Khattab عنه, to accept Islam. The very famous story of Umar عنه, going to his sister's house and uh, and reading Surah Taha and becoming, you know, and being humbled by the surah and coming to Islam. So we know that it's a, a Mecki surah, an early Mecki surah. And Surah Taha focuses on the story of Musa alayhi salam. But it's a very intimate message to the Prophet ﷺ because it focuses on the story of Musa ﷺ and his journey in particular. So it doesn't give a, a, you know, an emphasis to the reaction of Pharaoh or the reaction of Bani Israel as much as the journey of Musa ﷺ himself, the journey of Moses himself. And that is something that's very powerful to the Prophet ﷺ, very intimate to the Prophet ﷺ because like the story of Yusuf ﷺ, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's sort of the story of overcoming, um, you know, great trials and hardships. And subhanAllah, it, it mentions the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Musa alayhi salam in many different ways. And if you realize all of these surahs that we've just covered, Musa alayhi salam is mentioned, right? Musa is mentioned, one aspect of Musa alayhi salam is mentioned in almost every surah that we've covered. In the last five or six surahs, in fact, Musa alayhi salam is mentioned, an aspect of the story of Musa alayhi salam. Here... In Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, Musa alayhi salam being protected from Fir'aun and his army uh, when Fir'aun you know, gave the decree to kill out all, the, you, know, you know, to kill all of the baby uh, boys that were born to Bani Israel that year. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the love that he put in the hearts of people to Musa alayhi salam. Allah mentions the way that he took care of him in his upbringing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the way that he returned him to his mother. Uh, during infancy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the way that he saved him after he accidentally killed uh, the Coptic man. So after he saved Musa Islam from being killed, after Musa Islam af- accidentally killed the Coptic man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, the Musa Islam on his way back from Madian, being given uh, prophethood. Allah mentions the honor of Musa alayhi salam and speaking to Allah directly, right? Uh, you know, when Musa alayhi salam is, give, is being given that ni'mah of speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Now check this out. This is very cool. Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ مِنْ wa That we called him from uh, Mount Sinai and we brought him close to us. Surah Taha gives the details of that closeness, right? And subhanAllah, it's really interesting because in Surah Taha, the story of Musa alayhi salam is quite chronological where Allah is mentioning his various favors upon him. But what's out of place is that the first favor that Allah mentions to Musa alayhi salam is when Allah called Musa alayhi salam and spoke to him directly and the details of that. Why? Right? Why why not, you know why does it start with that and then go to walaqad mananna alayka marratan ukhra and and we bestowed our favor upon you once again and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Again, the, the story of the mother and Musa Islam's journey in life. Why does Allah mention that first? Because that is the greatest favor of Allah upon him. Being given the honor of being Kareemullah, the one who was spoken to directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being brought close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spoken to directly, that is a greater favor from Allah upon you than saving your life. SubhanAllah. That's the greatest favor that Allah ever bestowed upon Musa a.s. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that ni'mah first, that favor first, before he mentions all of the other favors. And of course, the first ayat of the Qur'an to the Prophet Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who creates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the favor of ilm, the favor of knowledge. So this 
conversation, this bringing Musa Islam close to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and speaking to him is the first favor that needs to be mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the rest of Surah Taha gives us this journey of Musa alayhi salam. And subhanAllah, you can just see the difference. So for example, in Surah Al-Nazi'at, uh, you know, where uh, we call it Ghalfat al hifad the mistake that you make when you memorize the Qur'an. There are some mistakes that you make because of the similarities of ayat, right? So, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Do you say, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى or هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Just compare Surah Taha to Surah Al-Nazi'at. In Surah Taha, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ, هل أتاك حَدِيثُ مُوسَى إِذْ رَأَى نَارًا فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِمْ كُثُوا إِنِّي أَنَسْتُ نَارًا لَعَلِّي آتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِقَبَسٍ أَوْ أَجِدُوا عَلَى النَّارِ هُدَى So on and so forth. It's, it's the long uh, conversation or the long story of Musa a.s. seeing uh, the light in the desert and going to it and going to the sacred valley of Tula and then re- receiving that message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what it meant to him, right? And the growth of Musa Islam through that journey. In Surah Al-Nazi'at, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, focuses on the reaction of Fir'aun because that's the theme of the surah. So there, Hal Ataka Hadith Musa has the story of Moses come to you. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focuses on uh, you know on Musa Islam going to the Fir'aun and Fir'aun you know responding in the way that he responded and the arrogance of Fir'aun, right? Where Fir'aun is is you know starts to pace and he starts to get nervous and Fir'aun starts to call out to the people you know ana rabbukum al-a'la i'm your lord the most high and so on and so forth because that's the theme of the surah so this theme in surah taha is the is the growth of the prophet it's the it's the personal journey of musa alayhi salam which is uh which is central to this surah and matters so much to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam now just like in subhanallah in surah maryam where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes from that those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from the, the prophets and those who favored Allah to those that followed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions at the end of Surah Taha, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةٌ ضَنْكَ That whoever turns away from my remembrance, he will have a miserable, constricting life. So Musa Islam had a life of goodness, a life of, of honor, right? Even though he went through a difficult journey. The one who turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have ma'ishatan dhanka, will have a constricted life, a suffocating life. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And we will raise him on the day of resurrection blind. And he will call out and say, Rabbi, لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى O oh my Lord, why have you made me blind? وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرَ And I used to be able to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, كَذَلِكْ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا Just like that, our signs came to you and you forgot them. And so today you are forgotten. Today you are forsaken. SubhanAllah, this is a powerful, powerful image. Now connect this to the story of Musa Islam and, and think about this connection. Musa salam was forsaken by man and Musa salam was in, in the Nile River all by himself as a baby. And Musa salam was seemingly abandoned. But Allah never forgot him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned in his favor throughout his journey. In this situation, this is a person that was deluded by the ease that they had in this world. And on the day of judgment, they are forsaken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا Because when the signs of Allah came to you, you forgot them. And so today you will be forgotten. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to make us amongst those who are forgotten or forsaken. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in our lives and in our you know, to that which is good for us in our dunya and our akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us when we question his decree. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm with the Qur'an and with the salah as he made those prophets and those great people before us firm. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan to you all. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please do, inshallah ta'ala, share the video uh, with, your, with your friends and family. Continue to hold strong and tune in, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, I appreciate the consistency, subhanAllah. Like I said, every time I log on, I notice the first people to say salam are the same people every single day. So I appreciate your consistency. Barakallahu feekum wa